Do you think there's any benefit to the wider world in us recording ourselves playing piano and posting it on Facebook and YouTube? Of course, we amateur pianists aren't likely to produce the perfect rendition that you'll be able to find recorded by our favourite pianists. However, today I'd like to share with you why I think that we are still some of the best ambassadors in the world for the music that we love. Are you sitting comfortably? Then let's begin. Welcome to Tommy's Piano Corner, I'm Tommy. The place for returning pianists, or in fact anybody who loves the piano, to share tips and ideas about how to get the most from this great hobby. These days, with YouTube and things like this, it's possible to listen to pretty much any piece of music played by some of the greatest pianists in the world, both past and present. You might think that there's no real value in us posting our versions of our favourite pieces, given all of these perfect and faultless versions that there are available. However, this is where I think we're wrong. For example, whilst you might be able to listen to, say, List Constellation No. 3, played by Rubinstein or Horowitz or Lang Lang, the simple fact is that most of the people that we know aren't likely to go searching for videos by any of these people, nor are they likely to listen to them if they come across them. This is why I firmly believe that even though we don't produce perfect versions, we are still some of the best ambassadors for this music that we love. Here are my three main reasons for that. Of course, we pianists know that piano music is some of the most beautiful music in the world. And sometimes we can find it hard to understand why everybody doesn't find it the same. However, in the modern world, listening to anything longer than three minutes is a serious challenge to many people's expectations. And I don't mean this in a disparaging way. We were brought up with that. Everything is packaged in these tiny little bite-sized chunks and therefore things that are longer just surprise our brains and we're not so used to listening to them. And this is the first advantage that we amateur pianists have over many of our professional colleagues. Simply, until we reach levels of great technical prowess, most of the music that we learn will be much, much shorter, more in line with this three-minute expectation which makes it a lot more approachable for our immediate friends and family to listen to. Secondly, and I guess many people will hate me for saying this, but a lot of virtuoso piano music really leaves the uninitiated quite cold. They don't find it approachable, they don't find it pleasant to listen to at all. And that's not to say that they can't grow to love this kind of stuff, but it's just to say that they are unlikely to go and seek out virtuoso piano music for the sake of it. Of course, professional pianists have to demonstrate their technical prowess. That's what their audience is looking for, that's what their audience is paying to see. And in the process, they produce some absolutely fabulously beautiful music that we fellow pianists will love to listen to. But even for the greatest pianists in the world, you'll notice that many of them in their encores we'll go and play something that's far more accessible. So, for example, Horowitz played Traumerei as an encore, which is a lovely, simple piece of music that is within the reach of most of us, I guess. And then, of course, the final reason that our friends and family will listen to the music is because we recorded it ourselves. I doubt anybody in my family would go onto YouTube and look for a video by Lang Lang. I'd be surprised, actually, if many of them even know who he is. However, because it's a piece of music that I've recorded, they are likely to take a little bit of time, sit down, listen to it, and enjoy it. And of course, don't forget, when our friends and family listen to us, they're not listening to see whether or not we play any wrong notes. And quite often, they probably wouldn't even notice the odd wrong notes here and there. They're simply listening because you've taken the time to record and then share it with them. 
I've been posting recordings of myself playing for over a year now on my Facebook page, also called, as you might guess, Tommy's Piano Corner. Here are some of the reactions that I've got from my friends to these videos. Feel free to go and have a listen to these videos on my Facebook page. If you're a pianist, I'm sure you'll hear that they are by no means perfect. If my friends were to listen to a version played by any good concert pianist, they'd hear something that's far superior to anything that I can do. However, and this is my point, they won't go and listen to a version played by a great concert pianist because at the moment they've no real interest in this kind of music. However, once introduced to some of the more accessible classical music, the chances that people will actually take the time and think about going to listen to a good piano recital start to rise incredibly. In fact, my sister-in-law stayed with us over the holidays last year, and when she was leaving, she made the remark that, ooh, I'm really starting to get into piano music these days, after having, of course, had to sit through my practicing on a daily basis whilst they were here. Therefore, I strongly urge you all out there to take some time and record some of these pieces that you love. I don't think you need to worry about them being perfect. You're not sitting an exam here. Let's just do our part to making listening to piano music as popular as it once was. I recorded a whole set of videos giving ideas of how you can go about filming yourself with just your phone and some basic equipment. I'll link them in the video card here for you. It's a playlist that you can go and watch later if you're up for the challenge. If you're not already, then do remember to subscribe to Tommy's Piano Corner. Click on the little bell icon so that you're notified of new videos as and when they're released. I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next week.